करें शुरू करें सो एंटी टेररिज्म बिकॉज यू नो रिसेंटली गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया गॉड एंटी सुस्टिक and enforcement directed and delhi police has conducted arrest search seizure particularly of the biggest threat to indian democracy the journalist theek hai so they have been arrested and imprisoned in that context we will look at the comprehensive framework of terrorism in india this entire news is very important and detailed beyond this you need nothing else do not waste your time it is more than sufficient for your internal security and the complex architecture of anti terror laws in india we will understand various dimension including some foreign studies about how should we deal with this issue of terrorism theek okay, hai please remember this so more important for your important for your gs paper 3 essay and most important interview because interview mein they want to ask such kind of question they always ask question which are of contemporary issues and they see how you behave they will say if you would be the commissioner of police of delhi and this arrest would be taking place what would you do they try to put you in situation so for that you need to have a holistic understanding first okay please remember that so let's start we know delhi police has invoked the uapa to seal the offices of some news portal particularly this portal known as news click alleging it received fund from pro promoting pro china propaganda ab ab how would you define promoting some pro china propaganda i don't know ठीक है एनी वे सो लेट एस सी हाउ इट वर्क फर्स्ट वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वट इज टेररिज्म वी ऑलरेडी नो टेररिज्म मीन्स वट डू वी अंडरस्टैंड बाई टेररिज्म टेररिज्म मीन्स ऑर्गेनाइज क्राइम विद अ जस्ट कॉज एनी ऑर्गेनाइज क्राइम दैट हैज अ जस्ट कॉज एसोसिएटेड विद दिस बेसिकली टेररिज्म because as such understand this there is no universally acknowledged definition of terrorism as of yet a nobody no country will agree on any definition anyway the prime reason is because every country to some extent is involved somewhere there for example baluchistan mein the separatists of baluchistan is the province of pakistan the pakistani government treats them as terrorists we treat them as freedom fighters same thing happens in palestine the palestine mein you have palestine and liberation organization which had carried out suicide bombing in all dramas the israeli government and most of the western government consider plo as a terrorist organization we never consider it terrorist organization we consider it the true representative of palestinians same you go to sri lanka sri lanka mein you had litte l t t e litte so that organization we never consider terrorist why of course sri lankan hindus we have sentiments for them Sri Lankan government considered them terrorists, and there was a civil war. Same, you can go in Myanmar. Myanmar, the Buddhist majority considered Rohingya Muslims and their uh, Arakan Salvation Army as a terrorist organization. We don't consider like this. So understand the problem. Somebody's terrorist is always somebody's patriot, depending upon where you stand. So understand this definition is very complex and it is very subjective, depending where you stand. the same very person can become your patriot or can become your terrorist and very prime example i always take is united states of america when mujahideens were raised mujahideens were raised by pakistan on behest of america when ussr invaded afghanistan in 1979 1979 mein bahar aa gaya tha wo 1979 mein ussr invaded afghanistan and america knew that ussr is a nuclear powered country and if i go into afghanistan it's a direct nuclear war something america cannot afford so america used pakistan pakistan could give money weapons and saudi arabia provide ideology the terrorism ideology that you have right now is known as sunni wahhabism sunni it is a radical islamist ideology the current one sunni wahhabism and saudi arabia is the biggest promoter of sunni wahhabism ठीक है प्लीज रिमेंबर दिस सो सऊदी अरेबिया प्रोवाइडेड फंड एंड आइडियोलॉजी टू बेसिकली रेडिकलाइज पीपल अमेरिका प्रोवाइडेड फंड एंड वेपन्स टू पाकिस्तान एंड पाकिस्तान रेज्ड पीपल नोन एज मुजाहिदीन सो कॉल्ड फाइटर ऑफ अल्लाह और इस्लाम व्हाई दे वर रेज्ड दे वर रेज्ड अगेंस्ट यूएसएसआर द लॉजिक वाज यूएसएसआर इज अ कम्युनिस्ट कंट्री कम्युनिज्म डज नॉट बिलीव इन रिलीजन फॉर एग्जांपल चाइना इज अ एथीइस्ट आपको पता हो तो 
Chinese government official religion is it is atheist. It does not believe in religions because Marxism believes that religion is the opium of masses. Religion is what? It's opium, drug. The way you give drug to somebody and the person behave ir irrationally, same is religion. You can use religion and can make anyone and do anything. You can make that person to donate his entire fortune. That's the power of religion. So communists believe that religion is the opium of masses, a drug of masses. So all communist countries, remember, are atheist. And Islam may atheism is a sin. So what Pakistan did? Pakistan told to this Mujahideen people that you are not fighting against USSR. You are fighting against Kafir. That's why they were called Mujahideen, the fighter of Islam or Allah against Kafirs. Who are these Kafirs? USSR. Clear to everyone? You can Google this. The American president has pictures with these Mujahideen. They were sitting in American president office, the Oval Office, and America, American president was calling them freedom fighter of Afghanistan. Same people. When these people in 2001 carries out an attack on Twin Tower of America, America classified them as terrorists. So the very same people which America created, they were freedom fighters as long as they were fighting against USSR. The second they turned toward America, they became terrorists. So please keep this at the background. Now let us see what is the legal framework in India to deal with terrorism. Generally, what is the definition of terrorism? Organized crime plus. This just cause vary from time to time. Sometime it was nationalism. World War One. I, I hope everyone knows. Serbian nationalist killed French Ferdinand, the Prince of Austria, that led to the First World War. That was an act of terrorism. So during World War One or between World War One, terrorism was associated with nationalism, something you cannot associate today. Today, largely terrorism is associated with the just causes, jihad. Understand this, jihad and crusades are very common. If you look at the medieval European history, it is filled with jihads and crusades. Basically, it's a religious war. Jihad and crusades, crusades in Christianity and jihad in Islam. Or you will know, Judaism, Jews, Christianity and Islam. Basically, kind of brother-sister religion. They all have same origin. They are known as Abrahamic religion. They came from one inside other. So for example, Islam, may Jesus is one of the prophet. Jesus is one of the prophets in Islam. But Muhammad is the last prophet. After, they, after it, there is no prophet. So you clear are these things? So remember, Judaism, Christian, Islam are more or less same. They have same tenets and they have same main origin, the Abrahamic religion they are called. They say, for example, Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism has the same origin. Hinduism came and Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism came out of Hinduism. So clear? Please remember, the just cause vary from time to time. So in that context, we have a law, very beautiful law, enacted by the most peace-loving person on earth, the Indira Gandhi. So, fine, let's see what is this. Constitutional guarantees against arrest and detention. Article 22 of the Constitution of India deals with protection against arrest and detention in certain cases. This is applicable to, please remember everyone, to both citizen and non-citizen. What is citizen? A citizen is a member of a state. Citizenship is a certificate of the membership of a state. And what is a state? Territory, population, ruled by a Sovereign and the sovereign often becomes the government. But remember, government is not sovereign, state is sovereign. But because state is an idea not visible, so the next visible thing is government. Okay, please remember this. So there are certain provisions. Article 22, clause 1. Clause clauses are not important. Just remember Article 22. Fine for you. Article 22, clause 1 says any person who is in custody has to be informed about the ground of his arrest and has the right to consult an advocate. So when you are being arrested, the police is under duty, constitutional duty. It's your right, their duty to tell you what is your ground of arrest, why they are arresting you if they arrest you. And plus, they cannot stop you from accessing any counsel. And Supreme Court has further clarified this. Supreme Court said that informing about ground of arrest, ka matlab ye hai. you're informing the person to be arrested. For example, I arrested you, put you in, into prison and told you, Bhai, I arrested you for this reason. What is the point? So informing you of ground of arrest means informing you or any person who can arrange your legal defense. 
it is not means the person who is arrested shall be informed it is mean any person who is in the authority capacity to arrange your legal defense must be informed clear everyone so constitution does not mention this but supreme court has interpreted this provision further okay please remember these two rights of yours second if you are arrested you must be produced before a judicial magistrate within 24 hours but there is a catch here this 24 hours does not include travel time ye thoda problem hai which i believe it should be eradicated because today we have technology it should be made compulsory if you are arresting somebody produce that person within one hour to a judicial magistrate and how you can do that video conferencing bhai wo zamana gaya when these constitution provision were written we were in 1947 and 1950 mein we got it 1950 mein there was no technology nobody could imagine we would have a video conferencing kind of thing now we have it so we have to qualify this this 24 hour i believe is too much in technology era it should be maximum it should be 4 to 5 hours and there should be a condition if you are unable to produce a person before a magistrate you must produce him or her through video conferencing immediately failure of which it will be considered the arrest was illegal we should add this we are not a police state police state you understand a state which governs itself by police and police state is antithetical to democracy clear everyone please remember this so we have to add something here magistrate ke aage ye hota the thing is magistrate the second you are produced before a magistrate na magistrate ask first question were you hurt and then ask the police why you arrested this person magistrate is supposed to be immune from government and that person asked this kind of question but understand this as george orwell has said government is everywhere and judiciary is not completely isolated the okay, government gets its way that's why you have uh, you have a lot of people in prison jaise abhi isme hai we will do prison statistics majority of people in prisons are not convicted they are under trials people whose trial has not been concluded means those people could be innocent and a lot of people spend their entire life in jail in spite of being innocent why it happens because police knows our judiciary is very fast you know it is very fast it solve cases very easily so they intensely put false cases they know it's a false case and you will prove it they know this you will prove it the problem is they know that the fastness of indian judiciary make sure that you will suffer something aap maan ke chaliye even if you have a lot of backing tab bhi at minimum ek saal to maan lijiye one year of your life will be wasted in a court case even if it is utterly false theek hai for that you need to be empowered also because aise nahi hota game chaliye yeah every arrest doesn't matter why you are arrested abhi hum karenge isme exception hai preventive detention wo abhi karenge wait a second so article 23 clause uh, 22 clause 3 again clauses are not important just remember the article it says nothing in clause 1 and clause 2 shall apply to any person for whom the time being is an enemy alien constitution uses the word enemy alien alien means anyone who is non citizen enemy alien means a person with india has some kind of dispute for example pakistani in this case can become enemy alien so if an enemy alien is arrested the protection like producing before a magistrate in 24 hours the kya bolte hain the ground of arrest the right to counsel may or may not be granted this is an exception second exception is preventive detention and the constitution says a person in detention cannot exceed 3 month unless an advisory board reports sufficient cause for extending the detention means you are if arrested you can be denied right to counsel even right to access to judiciary for at most Three months after that, you must be suggested by an advisory board. Uh, what is the problem? The problem is this advisory board does not have judicial officers. It has executive officers like DM. Now, uh, yeah, executive officers are government's own people. Okay, so fine. <clears throat> so first thing, let's start blaming first. The first people we will blame is Nehru, as government does for everything. We have to. Why? आपको पता ही होगा बिफोर नाइनटीन थर्टी सिक्स आई होप सबको पता है और जो भी होगा वो 
उसके नाम पे इट इज नोन एज रोलेट एक्ट दीज एक्ट वर प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन लॉ वट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन प्रिवेंटिव एंड वट इज डिफरेंस बिटवीन प्रिवेंटिव एंड प्यूनिटिव इन प्यूनिटिव डिटेंशन a person is punished for an offence committed by him or her after trial and conviction punitive means you committed a crime police arrested you created a charge sheet filed a charge sheet in the court you were tried in the court then you were given a punishment that is called punitive preventive detention means you have not committed any crime yet but police believes you can or you may commit a crime theek hai they get a dream or something that you may commit a crime as such i believe it's very very bad but that we will do later so ko samajh mein aaya there are two kind of detention preventive means you have not committed a crime police arrests you because of course we cannot wait for you to do a crime if the police have a sufficient cause to believe that you can commit a crime they can arrest you as such on book this provision is not very bad but what is bad hypocrisy because we fought against this law against britishers when britishers brought this law we carried out satyagraha we were like how could you bring preventive detention it's undemocratic you british people theek hai but yahan pe we at least they brought a law we to included this in constitution itself or that to fundamental right chapter you know the hypocrisy is extreme and who to blame i again say the nehru has to blame here because nehru promised indians In 1936, a civil liberty union was founded. <clears throat> civil liberty union was founded. The purpose of civil liberty union was to assist the people who have been convicted or who have been arrested by the Britishers in legal defence. During the foundation day of this, Nehru promised Indians on a speech that the independent India will not have any black laws because Gandhi used to call royal attack as black laws. and he promised us and he belied that promise this should not be the part of constitution at any cost we will understand why this is a severe i would say betrayal of the freedom fighters they should not have included this the question is why the there is a problem dekhiye you are very idealist when you are out of government aap mein saath aise zara meri baaton se agree kar rahe honge ha sir you are very right we should not have this but the second you will enter into government oh ho oh, i love this law <laughs> understand when you are the subject of power you cry when you are the implementer of power you enjoy and this is the problem with aapko kya lagta hai in 75 years of independence no ias officer no judge knows about this even they may have been witness to this kind of provision sometime in their life they some of their relatives or any of their family members or anyone must be subjected to this law and that point of time they must have cried also oh my god how draconian but the second they get into power they are like oh i enjoy this law so this problem we have but nonetheless whom to blame i would say we have to blame our freedom fighters first because they were responsible for a constitution free from this law they promised sabse badi baat hai they promised us they belied their promise so it's a cheating on to us okay please remember this now let's see what are the anti terrorist law in india quickly first anti terror law we have is tada हिस्ट्री शीटर्स हाँ हाँ सबसे पहले उन्हें उठाते हैं हाँ यस बिकॉज मेरे हिसाब से तो अनफेयर है उन्होंने क्राइम नहीं किया दे हैव कमिटेड अ क्राइम अब क्या कर रहे हैं बार बार यू इफ यू आर अरेस्टिंग देम यू आर रिमाइंडिंग देम दैट यू आर अ क्रिमिनल they they cannot be they can always remember the purpose of justice is not to punish it's to reform no where in the world the for example we make a law do not jump a red light so it is to deter the people we do not want you to become jump a red light get into an accident and injure yourself and other people maza thodi na aa raha hai to make this law and punish you no law aims to punish all law aims to reform ye thoda galat hota hai but kya kare theek hai police has some limitation they have a big limitation you have seen a police officer beat anyone why they beat because there is one thing imagine there is a person who was stealing something a police person caught him beat him and let him go it's easy second option is arrest him make a charge sheet go to court file a case that case will go for thousands of years who knows okay <laughs> so police knows that kaise how would i have this time 
ऊपर से दे हैव टू डू सलाम हजूरी फॉर दिस पॉलिटिशियंस हु विल कॉल देम आज जो बेटा मसाज करवानी है सो दिस आर द प्रॉब्लम्स दे विटनेस आई ऑलवेज से अनटिल अनलेस वी ब्रिंग जुडिशियल रिफॉर्म एंड पुलिस रिफॉर्म्स इन इंडिया नथिंग विल चेंज इन दैट्स व्हाई आई ऑलवेज से ना दैट इट इज ऑफन रिमार्क्ड इंडिया में देयर वाज नो इंडिपेंडेंस इट वाज अ ट्रांसफर ऑफ पावर यू लुक एट द प्रोविजन दे आर मोर लेस सिमिलर ऑफ द ब्रिटिशर्स एंड ओनली थिंग दैट इज हैपन इन इंडिया इज यू हैव राइट टू वोट दैट्स इट apart from that india is still a police state clear <clears throat> so remember that we will discuss this later some commission's report so what is this tada tada was uh, when it was 1987 of i think during rajiv gandhi's time or later the law gave wide power to law enforcement agencies tada mujhe year galat lag raha hai i believe because indira gandhi ke time pe bhi tada tha I believe मुझे याद आ रहा है तो प्लीज चेक दिस टाडा एक्ट का ईयर कौन सा है प्लीज चेक इट आउट सो वट इज टाडा लेट सी दिस लॉ गेव वाइड पावर्स टू लॉ एनफोर्समेंट एजेंसी फॉर डीलिंग विद नेशनल टेरर एंड सोशली डिस्ट्रप्टिव क्या हुआ अच्छा मॉडिफाई किया था वो मुझे लगा क्योंकि इंदिरा गांधी ने इसका बहुत इस्तेमाल किया था ब्रॉड क्या ईयर है इसका मीसा मीसा था अच्छा मीसा पर वो तो फिर एनएसए में बदल गया ना टाडा तो अलग था मीसा अलग था मीसा वट इज रेफरिंग टू इट दिस वॉज डिफरेंट दैट वॉज प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन लॉ विच हैज कन्वर्टेड टू एन एस ए नेशनल सिक्योरिटी एक्ट नाउ दैट डिफरेंट दीज आर टेरर लॉस दे वर टू लॉज इन इंडिया वन इज प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन लॉ वन आर टेरर लॉस दीज आर टेरर लॉस तो ठीक है फाइन यू चेक द ईयर but let's see the provision that is the big concern the accused person should be detained can be detained up to for one year and which democracy allows this for one year you could be detained and that too the most important thing without being produced to a judicial magistrate within 24 hours for one years under tada you could be put behind bars without any judicial access this is how autocracies works this is how china works theek okay? hai and इससे भी ट्रेबलिंग प्रोविजन कन्फेशन मेड टू पुलिस ऑफिसर वॉज एडमिसिबल एज एविडेंस जबकि कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी क्लियरली से नो सेल्फ इनक्रिमिनेटिंग एविडेंसेज आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन से नो सिटीजन ऑफ इंडियन अदरवाइज कैन बी कंपेल टू गिव एविडेंस अगेंस्ट इज ओन केस तो रिमेंबर एनी स्टेटमेंट यू गिव टू द पुलिस इन पुलिस स्टेशन इज नॉट एडमिसिबल इन द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ बट दिस लॉ अलाउड दिस अब इमेजिन एंड वी ऑल नो हाउ आर पुलिस बिहेव सो दे विल पुट यू बिहाइंड बार थोड़ा सा डराएंगे एंड यू आर लाइक ओके आई विल साइन इट आई एम द बिगेस्ट टेररिस्ट यू एवर फाउंड ठीक है सो ओके फाइन वो जो भी ईयर है बस अंडरस्टैंड प्रोविजन सो क्लियर दैट यू कुड भी डिटेन फॉर वन ईयर विदाउट जुडिशियल एक्सेस दैट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग इज कन्फेशन मेड टू अ पुलिस ऑफिसर वॉज admissible in the court of law and the burden of proof was on you to prove you are innocent the police does not have to prove you are guilty it will be assumed you are guilty if you are arrested you have to prove that you are innocent and this is the problem understand why we gave rights to the citizens because state is too vast dekhi they have police state mein what you have police judiciary executive everything is a state मैंने आपको बताया था व्हेन वी नेगोशिएटेड द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन व्हाट इज कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अमंग ऑल ऑफ अस दैट्स व्हाई द फर्स्ट लाइन इज वी द पीपल व्हेन वी नेगोशिएटेड दिस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वी गिव ऑल द पावर्स टू द गवर्नमेंट देन वी सेड फाइन यू हैव ऑल द पावर्स बट आई वांट लिमिटेशन ऑन दोस पावर्स एंड दैट इज नोन एज फंडामेंटल राइट्स द फंडामेंटल राइट्स वर गिवन टू अस प्रिसाइसली बिकॉज़ वी वांट टू लिमिट स्टेट पावर स्टेट इज टू पावरफुल it should be the burden on the state to prove you are guilty but it is other way around in legal term it is known as mens rea mens rea means guilty intent clear everyone so this law assumes you are guilty you have to prove you are innocent next the courts were set up exclusively to hear the case okay fine matlab exclusive court for tada and police officers were also empowered to attach properties of the accused another provision currently no police officer has that power only courts can attach your property police can only ask the court please attach the property of this person 
but under this law even police person could attach your property that was significant and however it said there should be no third degree in harassment but sabko pata hai duniya kaise chalti hai theek hai and indira gandhi is anyway famous for third degree theek hai please remember this clear all the provision and the biggest troubling point is not that indira gandhi kind of people use this law what is the biggest problem the so called institution of justice supreme court of india at least inhe nahi karna chahiye tha ye the supreme court of india upheld this law constitutionally valid this is the problem we have i always told you even judiciary is not immune from government government is everywhere and they have a file on anyone theek hai when you start doing a lot of things then they open the file okay you are trying to be honest okay open his file pata lagao itihas kholo iska and you can maine aapko example diya tha search about lavasa election commissioner what happened to him there was a very good person election commissioner i cannot tell because i also love my liberty so there was a lavasa lavasa was election commissioner usko ek baar padh lena what happened to him theek hai how government behave so if election commissioner can be harassed to kon harass nahi ho sakta by the government theek hai uh, read about him very good example so anyway tada labs in 1995 find good thing then government was like okay fine i will have another law the law is ota prevention of terrorism act this law was enacted in 2002 it was in response to 2001 terror attack on parliament cross border terror attack by pakistani terrorists was on parliament of india and jammu kashmir legislature in response to that we brought pota <clears throat> so basically it was same law more power to police to arrest you to detain you without any judicial accountability this kind of provision were given so no, finally again supreme court in pucl case upheld the law so two times supreme court belied first our constitution founder first our constitution founder lied to us then constitution the so called protector of liberty guardian of fundamental rights decried its duties for two times fine now the current law that we have is tada was earlier it was replaced by pota the pota has gone now we have only law that we have in india for terrorism is uap unlawful activities prevention act this is the only law so far we have for terrorist activities now we know it of course it restrict your article 19 clause 1 freedom of speech and expression whatever let's see how it deals under uapa a commission of an offense is punished for unlawful activities in terrorist act or what is this unlawful activity in terrorist act it defines also unlawful activity include any action that support or intend to support the secession of any part of india and those that challenge or aim to disrupt india's sovereignty and territorial integrity anyone for example the khalistanis who are supporting the uh, movement of punjab even the northeastern people for most importantly nagaland nagaland i told you even today you can find walls where it is written nagas are not indian indians are not nagas and northeast annexation in india has always been a bigger problem for us there have been too much insurgencies right now except for some amount of manipur and nagaland largely there is no insurgency largely i'm not saying absolutely but largely next is terrorist act tag defined terrorist act is refer to violent act intend to threaten india security and instill terror in the people within india or abroad so any act that aims to threaten india security and instill terror ab ye instill terror kya hota hai ab main to darta apne pita ji se bhi hu to kya un pe uapa laga de he also instill terror in me so can we apply uapa on him so what is this instill terror it should not be so vague it should be a bit uh, clear criteria because you are blaming someone for a terrorist act it cannot be instill terror some criteria could be made for example uh, using guns using arm, ammunition using weapons that clear criteria that should separate what is this instill terror kuch bhi ho sakta hai ye to theek hai please remember this so this law is highly vague and open to open to executive interpretation government kuch bhi interpret karti hai theek hai next thing central government can declare specified organizations as unlawful associations terrorist gangs or terrorist organization once an organization is declared as unlawful under uapa even becoming a member of such organization is an offense 
so initially this law was made 1967 i believe indira gandhi's time it was made only and only for organizations it did not cover individuals then modi ji came modi ji was like aise kaise ho sakta hai mere rehte so 2019 mein modi ji amended the law why understand this because if he have brought, if he had brought some terrorist law we have we do not have a terrorist law as of yet tada we had gone kota we had gone so modi ji always criticized indira gandhi aaj bhi karte hain you see his speech never ends without congress theek hai he do not talk about he, he talk lots about bjp he talks more about congress theek hai so he always remind us what indira gandhi did wrong always remind us a good thing i believe the people should be remember should remember every day what indira gandhi did so that they can remember somebody like indira gandhi also theek hai so anyway he reminds us of her so if he brought an a terrorist law because terrorist law applies on individual then he could be criticized so he played a safe game rather than bringing a new law they amended the uapa remember initially uapa applied only and only on organizations not on individuals 2019 mein the modi government amended and included individuals in the definition of terrorism now not only organizations can be declared terrorist even individuals can be declared terrorist now okay another power government enjoy nicely <coughs> chaliye so some amendment this were brought whatever drama let's forget that now let us see what is the process under this law so i believe this law is not that vague for organizations how an organization is declared terrorist or unlawful let's see the government of india issues a notification to ban the organization as soon as it issues the notification the notification goes to tribunal unlawful activity prevention tribunal the government issues a notification the notification goes to unlawful activities prevention tribunal within 30 days then the tribunal sends uh, then the tribunal sends a so cause notice to the organization government bans organization sends the notification to tribunal tribunal then shows uh, issues a so cause notice to the organization and the government government will sorry tribunal uh they get tribunals are like court but not courts let's understand the difference court is a place of justice where you can go for any case tribunals are made by the laws of parliament of india or the state legislature dedicated to a particular cause for example income tax tribunal income tax tribunal will can hear cases only and only for income tax courts are vast courts can hear anything under the sun सबको समझा ट्राइब्यूनल आर मेड बाय द लॉज ऑफ पार्लियामेंट और स्टेट लेजिस्लेचर डेडिकेटेड ओनली एंड ओनली फॉर स्पेसिफिक नैरो टास्क सो इट्स एन अनलॉफुल एक्टिविटी प्रिवेंशन ट्राइब्यूनल इट मींस ओनली केसेस रिलेटेड टू यूएपीए कैन गो हियर क्लियर दिस मच सो गवर्नमेंट इश्यूज अ बैन नोटिफिकेशन विद इन 30 डेज इट गोस टू अनलॉफुल एक्टिविटी प्रिवेंशन ट्राइब्यूनल देन इट इश्यूज अ शो कॉज नोटिस टू आस्क द ऑर्गेनाइजेशन व्हाई यू शुड नॉट बी बैंड then you have to represent your case tribunal can also conduct an inquiry if it wants and if the tribunal is satisfied with the ban then tribunal approves the ban and the ban become applicable for 5 years i believe good process it's a good process of banning an organization at least in between you have a tribunal but there is a problem with tribunal's composition it is often composed by judicial officers not judges understand the difference here judicial officers can belong to government also judicial officer is different judges are different so all tribunals does not have judges tribunals can also have judicial officers something government has too much control over okay please remember that thing ab let's see what are the issues with uapa sabko clear hai uapa basic provision and the 2019 amendment now anyone including individual can be declared terrorist the misuse between 2018 to 2020 a significant number of uap arrest occurred only 3% resulted in conviction so 97% are in prison and in uap without conviction this is the problem i have told you it's very hard to prove a criminal offense criminal offenses proving is very hard why because india has a law purpose or india has a provision 
in criminal laws a person can be convicted only and only there is proof beyond doubt this is difference between civil law and criminal law if you are committing a civil crime monetary nature or petty nature in that the the investigation officer does not have to give proofs beyond doubt in criminal offense you have to give, give proofs beyond a doubt so proving a criminal case is much harder than a civil case civil case can easily be proved please remember that so only 3% conviction moreover uapa has been sabko pata hai uapa has been applied by the government broadly against the tribal communities to individual on so using social media the recent case the all the journalists who have been arrested are the journalists who criticize the government every one of them theek hai who are tried under uapa they are the people who criticize the government none of the people we know who find nano chip in 2000 rupee notes these kind of people are not arrested and they will never be arrested anyway clear so this cast a shadow shadow on are we a mother of democracy let's see government ka kya justification dega wo government hi kya jo justification de police wale kya kar lenge unke paas kuch nahi hota कुछ देखे क्या होगा सो कोर्ट में जाएंगे द कोर्ट विल आस्क व्हाई यू अरेस्टेड व्हाई दिस अरेस्टेड दे विल गिव प्रूफ दे विल डू डेली डेली एट लीस्ट दे विल वेस्ट वन और टू इयर्स ऑफ योर लाइफ एंड आफ्टर दैट यू विल बी फ्री जाओ एंजॉय करो हां तो ग्राउंड बताया ना हां तो ऑफ कोर्स आपको प्रूफ करना है सर इन्होंने बोला यू हैव बीन अरेस्टेड फॉर प्रो चाइना एक्टिविटीज नाउ पुलिस हैव टू प्रूव that they were pro chinese and they have to prove that we were no that's the case because all all cases are adversarial main aapko bataya tha indian courts works on adversarial jurisdiction adversarial means two party behave like enemies and they have to prove each other's arguments theek hai please remember that let's see mother of democracy how it behaves <coughs> the mother of democracy is no other civilized country this is very good about india's democracy that no other country including britain which created rollet act for india no country except india democracy so called democracy which created rollet act for india have any law whatsoever for preventive detention india is the only liberal democracy and the mother of democracy having the preventive detention law no other country has it on the other hand some countries even during world war most of the european countries including usa who were directly involved in world war they did not have any such law so no country except india india has preventive detention law and above that india has preventive detention law in its fundamental right chapter itself okay this is a big problem for india anyway you uh, england did introduce england introduced during second world war particularly a preventive detention law but it was too fluid because in this a person could be detained only to the satisfaction of home minister not some police officer yahan pe kya hai the satisfaction of police officer is applied wahan pe the satisfaction of home minister and that to only one person so only one time britain had this law during world war and that too it was too uh, you can say too small or too narrow you could be arrested only and only if the home minister himself approves the arrest no police officer can arrest you plus only one person can be arrested jaise we arrest wholesale na jaise recently we arrested wholesale so wholesale arrest cannot happen only retail arrest will happen theek hai please remember that <laughs> international view so let's see what is the international view the mother of democracy how the world sees mother of democracy the european court of human right has held that preventive detention as found in indian constitution is illegal under european convention on human rights regardless of the safeguards so that is the that is the view of not mine the european court of human rights on indian constitution that the preventive detention law in indian constitution is completely illegal under european convention on human rights regardless of the safeguards one safeguard is that you cannot be arrested beyond 3 months but on that is applicable only if parliament has not made a law parliament has made a law two law we know uapa we discuss that is anti terror law and second law is nsa national security act of similar nature both are apart from this south asian human rights documentation center 
they gave a submission to a body known as national commission to review the working of constitution aapko pata hai lakshmi kant mein it is also mentioned it was appointed to review the working of constitution in 2000 ki how the constitution is working what changes we have to bring they submitted a submission to them and suggested please delete please delete preventive detention from your constitution as soon as possible तो एज वी कैन सी प्रिवेंटिव टेंशन देखिए आई एम तो स्ट्रिक्टली अपोज प्रिवेंटिव टेंशन चाहे कोई भी हो इंदिरा गांधी हो डेट मैटर एनी गवर्नमेंट कुड बी इन पावर द प्रॉब्लम इज प्रिवेंटिव टेंशन पुट सिटीजन एट द मर्सी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट एंड दैट इज नॉट हाउ डेमोक्रेसी बिहेव डेमोक्रेसी में द गवर्नमेंट शुड बी एट द मर्सी ऑफ द पीपल इट शुड नॉट बी द अदर वे राउंड कि गवर्नमेंट का जब मन करा जैसे था उठा के ले गए ठीक है दैट्स हाउ ब्रिटिशर्स यूज टू बिहेव एंड वी आर नो डिफरेंट फ्रॉम ब्रिटिश दैट्स वाई इट इज सैड that india did not gain independence in 1947 it was just transfer of power because provisions are the same the behavior of the state is the same nothing has changed much ab let's see delhi high court delhi high court ma case was filed that case is known as asif ikwal tana versus state of delhi in this case delhi high court gave very beautiful observation on this law let's see what are those observation pehla the word terrorist act should be trivialized as much as possible they said the word you are using a terrorist act trivialize it do not use this word to anything for example <clears throat> how so uh, delhi high court defined any activity that comes under usual law and order problem any activity that comes under usual law and order problem for example you are protesting theek okay? hai not rioting even riots are law and order problem they are not a terrorist act for example somebody is protesting upsc student were recently protesting for additional attempt police hai utha ke le gaye sabko they were like pehle before becoming ips let's understand jail system first theek <laughs> hai <laughs> so that happened anyway so delhi high court said any problem that is of usual law and order that can be dealt under ipc shall not be dealt under uap means if you have a law under ipc to deal with that issue you should not use uap it means uap is a second stage defense first stage mein you will apply ipc because ipc is very weak indian penal code these laws deals with various kind of event for example uh, uh, assault uh, uh, if you start fighting all these crimes are normal crimes and they are dealt dealt in IPC understand UAPA is an extreme law. UAPA declares you as a terrorist, not as a criminal. A criminal is considered as a equal citizen. Terrorist is not. So according to Delhi High Court, the first stage may you will apply IPC. Then second stage may you will move to UAPA if and only if required. And in this, they depended upon Supreme Court's decision. सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन हितेंद्र विष्णु ठाकुर केस सुप्रीम कोर्ट इन हितेंद्र विष्णु ठाकुर केस इट्स सेड एवरी टेररिस्ट मे बी अ क्रिमिनल बट एवरी क्रिमिनल कैन नॉट बी लेबल्ड अ टेररिस्ट दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम अब क्वेश्चन कम दिस इफ दिस यूएपीए सो बैड एंड बिलीव मी दिस इज बिंगिंग वेरी बैड रेप्यूटेशन टू इंडिया एंड आई टोल्ड यू दिस अर्लियर ऑल्सो एक्सेप्ट फॉर कॉमन जनता India does not have very good image in academic circles. आप दुनिया का कोई भी न्यूज़पेपर उठा लेना, except for Indian newspapers, उनकी तो क्वालिटी बची नहीं है. You can pick any newspaper of the world. India has not shown in a very good light. Academic circles में it's very bad. And why? Because I told you intellectuals are different. Intellectuals have vast knowledge of history, geography, polity. They know past well and they can predict future well. The way a doctor predicts. a doctor of body what that person has that person has vast knowledge of medicine based on that that person sees your body symptom and predict these could be the disease then you have testing and all on drama take play same is the intellectual and that's why all dictators fear two people main aapko hamesha bataya okay. scholars intellectuals and students because students are idealist they think they will change the world when they are in schools and colleges real life is different sabko samajh raha hai please remember that Now let us see the recommendation on these laws. South Asian Human Rights Documentation Center. This center submitted a, a submission to our commission, that is NCRWC, National Commission to Review the Working of Constitution. So what it says? 
पहला थिंग इज सेस ये दिस रिकमेंडेशन इज सफिशिएंट इसे ज्यादा मत करना आई एम टेलिंग यू अगेन इट्स मोर देन सफिशिएंट कंटेंट दे से द प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन अंडर आर्टिकल 22 एंड एंट्री 3 ऑफ द कॉन्क्यूरेंट लिस्ट पहला सजेशन इज द प्रिवेंटिव डिटेंशन मेंशन अंडर आर्टिकल 22 एंड द एंट्री 3 ऑफ द कॉन्क्यूरेंट लिस्ट मस्ट बी डिलीटेड बिकॉज़ यू ऑलरेडी हैव एंट्री 9 Entry nine of the union list says that union government or union parliament can enact on preventive detention only for three reasons: defence, foreign affairs, and security of the state. So they say remove the power of state governments to enact on preventive detention, and plus remove preventive detention from your fundamental right chapter. You can make laws, but make laws on emergency basis, and that too with a sunset clause. If you're making a terrorist law, it must die within few years. Do not have a always applicable law. Okay, so three law. If if you have to find any law that can be blamed for India's democracy's decline, there are three laws: Armed Force Special Power Act (AFSPA), second UAPA, third NSA. These three laws are highly PMLA. Oh, money laundering is there, so I don't think that's a bad law. these are very severely bad law. anyway these three laws are the real reason india's democracy is declining and kamal ki baat these laws were made by the person modi ji criticize a lot and uses a lot theek hai you criticize a person then uses their provisions theek hai that's hypocrisy anyway if preventive detention to be remain pehla to wo kehta hai remove preventive detention and keep entry 9 that allows union government to make laws for three issues defense foreign affairs and security of india even if you want to keep preventive detention it says include well defined criteria do not use vague term instill terror aisa nahi use well defined criteria so that it is known to everyone what is terrorism and what is not so everyone will know abhi kya nobody know what is terrorism government can interpret anything as terrorism so make well defined criteria these are very big laws and do not make them vague second point there should always be a meaningful judicial review aap kar sakte hain bilkul kar sakte hain if you are arresting anyone you can have a secret hearing of judges public hearing mat karaiye you can have a secret hearing in which a person is in detention the judge can go to the jail the judge can go to the jail and see the conditions zarur ho na har baar jailer jail ko hi aap leke jaoge you do not have to take a detainee to the uh, judge you can take a judge to the jail and that judge can review the cases so they say two things first either remove if you are unable to remove then at least give a well defined criteria with a meaningful judicial review a pre condition for human rights next third <coughs> government of india indira gandhi passed a law we know 40 44 sorry after indira gandhi you passed the law the janata party government 44 amendment to constitution this amendment reduced the three months period to two months but this has not been notified till today so che kab pass hua tha ye because making rahul gandhi to apologize is more important than two months so three months limit was reduced to two months it has not been notified it is a law all you have to do is notify this in gazette of india and it will become implementable this amendment we should implement as soon as possible last thing they say the advisory board review i told you na after three months advisory board shall review the advisory board review has executive review i told you most of the officers of this so called board are executive like dm and all they should be kaha gaya they should be judicial. judicial review first do not have this law if you are having this law then clearly define the criteria of what is what you will call preventive detention or terrorism and with meaningful judicial review after that <clears throat> in review committee judges should be there not your executive officers who are directly under your control it should not happen ah uh, as soon as the detainee is arrested they must be informed of the ground of arrest it violates this provision they say there should be a minimum period right now there is not a minimum period to inform your ground of arrest under upn nsa upn nsa magar arrest kar jate ho to it encourages to inform you within 48 hours but if a police person feel it will not be right so they can arrest you without telling you why you are being arrested 
ठीक है तो दिस शुड नॉट बी देयर दे से पुट अ मिनिमम टाइम मे बी वन मंथ इफ यू लाइक बट कीप इट बट दैट टू मस्ट बी अप्रूव बाय जज कीप जुडिशरी इन बिटवीन सिंपल लॉजिक इज कीप जुडिशरी इन बिटवीन लास्ट पॉइंट यूनाइटेड नेशन ह्यूमन राइट कमिटी हैज स्टेटेड दैट एनी पर्सन अरेस्टेड मस्ट हैव इमीडिएट एक्सेस टू काउंसिल However, Supreme Court of India in A K Roy versus Union of India case that detainees do not have the right to legal representation or cross examination in revisory board, it must be repealed. So, as I said, Supreme Court of India has protected our liberty every time. Sometimes Supreme Court has denied its constitutional responsibility to limit the government. I told you who has the responsibility to protect fundamental rights. Supreme Court, a prime responsibility. A lot of times, Supreme Court denied that. Anyway, clear. so we have discussed all terror laws we have discussed reviews we have discussed recommendations judicial review is the power of judiciary to review the laws made by legislature or action of the government to see whether they fit the constitution or not and if they do not fit judiciary can declare them unconstitutional that is called judicial review chaliye let's come to the next pyara pyara news bihar caste census pehla question it's a very small news <laughs> the first question is why caste census do what do you think pehla aap log batai then i will tell do you think we should have a caste census in india tum sare jail jane wale tum sab bigad gaye ho understand this yes it's a needed one of course we uh, understand the politics in india uh, bjp is a right wing party which plays the politics of religion other parties congress and particularly bsp sp they are center and left parties they place the politics of caste so the thing is bjp why bjp does not want a caste census because if caste census happens then hindus will be divided into caste and in that they will not be vote bjp theek okay? hai this is the biggest problem for bjp other parties knows if there will be a caste census then they will be divided into caste then they will not vote bjp so it's indeed is the part of politics so the politics ko keep aside ab look at the real picture we have reservation in india sc st obc so at the second point aap bataiye do you think reservation should continue or 